we're going to go ahead and get into today's conversation. So we're going to be doing a deep dive on Walmart shipping and routing transportation guide. And to, leading today's content is Peter. Peter is a part of our content team here on the Supplier Wiki team. Um, between the two of us um, and the rest of the content team, we create the articles, the ebooks, and the webinar that you're going to get into today. So glad that you're going through this, Peter. I know you worked uh, tirelessly on this deck. So let's kind of see what we're going to get into today for the agenda. So starting at the top of the hour, we'll be talking about how you can create a ship point. Then we'll get into tracking shipments. We'll talk about Walmart shipping success metrics, some of best practices from the 500 plus suppliers that we work with. And then we always leave time at the end for Q&A um, with myself and Peter. And here are a couple of our FAQs that we get pretty regularly. So will you get a copy of today's slide deck? Yes. Whenever you join a supplier wiki webinar, we're always going to send you a copy of the slide deck in PDF format. And then we'll be sending a recording to your inbox in about three to four business days. You can also always find any of our recordings if you don't sign up for one of our webinars on YouTube. And you can also find it on our Supplier Wiki website as well as a downloadable PDF of the slide deck. And then the second question we get a lot is what is the best way to ask a question? So if you see on your Zoom, you see the Q&A tab, it has two little speech bubbles. That's the easiest way for me to see your questions. And I'll prioritize those questions and tee them up for up to Peter. When I'll do that is usually at the end of the webinar. But if we have a question that's pertinent to the slide that we're on, I'll kind of interject and we'll answer that question um, right then. Otherwise, if you have any insight or best tips that you want to share, we always love to learn from each other. Share that in the chat where we talked a little bit about recipes today. All right. And then if this is your first time on a webinar with us, hello, welcome. Our The company that we're a part of, so Supplier Wiki is the educational arm and we create free content. Our kind of parent company is Supply Pike, and we create cloud-based tools that help CPGs reduce revenue loss. We do this in a couple different ways. Today, we're talking about Walmart, and we have solutions for helping detect, resolve, and dispute your deductions. Um, and we also have solutions for some of the other programs like OTIF and SWEP. We're also in other retailers like Target, Amazon, Kroger, and we'll be expanding into new retailers in 2024. So stay tuned for that. Last thing I'll say here is we work with lots of suppliers. Some of them are listed here. And if you aren't currently working with us, we would love to see your, your brand's logo up here in the future. All right. So Peter, I'll hand it over to you to get into today's content. Thank you very much, Ali. Um, yeah, Ali is kind of talking about how much, you know, blood, sweat and tears I, I put into this webinar. Um, this webinar is really more of a kind of just a distillation of the shipping and routing transportation guide itself. Um, mixed in with, as Ali was mentioning, some of our insights that we have from working with um, suppliers. But what we would really like more than anything is for this to be an opportunity, one, for people who are who don't know anything about this guide to learn a little bit about it, but two, for people who are kind of, you know, in the weeds and in the trenches, um, engaging with the guide um, and trying to make it work on a practical level in their actual Walmart businesses to all get together and have an open conversation about um, what's the most that we can get out of this guide. So um, we do like to think that we're creating educational content that is beneficial for, uh, for people. But um, for those of you who are familiar with the shipping and routing transportation guide, or for those of you who are um, uh, already putting a lot of these um, uh, best practices into practice, um, what we'd really like is for this to be a conversation about um, best best practices between um, ourselves, right? So that we can create a conversation going um, around how to be a best in class Walmart supplier. So, um, but yeah, uh, we're going to start with a little introductory kind of um, portion here about the guide, uh, where to find it, um, and all the different sort of things that it's really touching on, because it is uh, it is an introductory um, guide for Walmart suppliers, but it touches on a lot of other issues, a lot of other kind of larger compliance programs, 
um, that will be sort of just scratching the surface of today. So wherever your questions lead you, go ahead and ask those in the Q&A. Um, or if you have more comments for the chat, go ahead and put those there too. Um, we'd love to we'd love to have an open conversation about this. Um, so the guide itself can be found um, under the transportation basics portion of the Retail Link Academy. Um, and then the shipping and routing guide is downloadable from there um, in PDF form. Um, if you get uh, when when you get a copy of this slide deck, that hyperlink will be clickable. It will take you to the Retail Link um, uh, URL, so you'll still need to put your login information uh, in there, um, but that will take you directly to it. Um, but the the most kind of important topics that it's covering seem kind of random. Uh, but it makes sense in the context of the whole uh, document. But the first thing that they cover is the transportation portal, because creating ship points is such an important and, and fundamental part of the process um, of being a supplier. Um, so it's, it opens up the transportation portal before going into that, and then covers the, um, the TSTB 2.0, the transportation supply chain portal in in great detail. There's some other stuff in there too that is that is really important for um, for things like timing and routing, scheduling um, that we won't be covering in as much detail today. Um, but those are kind of the main um, the main points that we thought we'd like to cover. Um, so when it comes to creating a ship point, this is the most kind of fundamental um, thing to do for suppliers. Um, but maybe for some of you, it's something that you did at the very beginning. And now that your business is growing, um, it's something you haven't done in a while, something that uh, the person in your position before you did, right? So you need to learn how to create new ship points. Um, so we're going to go through some of that here uh, right now. So it starts with the transportation portal. Again, you've got another hyperlink there um, that will take you to a retail link um, uh, hyperlink. So uh, if not, you can also search in retail link for that transportation portal. Um, so the, the main kind of functions of this app, the main sort of operations that it does is you can request routing cancellation, which is super important, confirm shipment opportunities, and it's also really helpful for product overflow. Um, so a lot of really fundamental shipping related stuff, but it is essential for ship point creation. Um, so it's a primary way that you can actually communicate with Walmart's transportation team. So all of those main functions that you see over there on the right, um, those are all just kind of some of the main um, some of the main uh, talking points or uh, um, functions that you will have in your interactions with the transportation team, ideally. Um, it is also referred to as the team support portal. Like it wouldn't be a Walmart app if it didn't have multiple names um, that are very different from each other. So the team support portal uh, or the transportation portal, um, that might be a little bit more of an outward facing versus an inward facing uh, distinction in language. Maybe Walmart refers to it as the team support portal um, uh, internally, or maybe that's how it started. And now there's just this bleeding over um, in that, uh, in that on that front. But uh, either way, transportation portal is kind of the one that I've seen the most of in terms of the language that people use to describe it. Um, so I think that that's your best bet. But if you ever see the team support portal and you're scratching your head, what is that? I've never used that before. Maybe you have. It's just um, an alternative, uh, an alternative spelling. OK, uh, so uh, creating an account in the transportation portal is the first thing that you do before you can do anything else, really. Um, so, uh, the link on the slide before, which is just kind of the transportation portal app, uh, takes you to the login, um, and the landing page where you can create an account, um, from there. So you just put in that standard information, email name, uh, first and last and email. And then, um, in the request comments, um, Walmart advises putting in some, some extra information, right? So this is something that, uh, isn't necessarily intuitive in the user experience, but it is something that Walmart would like. Um, so it might be information that needs to get communicated later on if it hasn't been done already. Um, but if you're actually creating an account, then you can go in there and put this information in there and it should be what Walmart is expecting, according at least to their um, routing and transportation guide. 
So the full company name, uh, if a 3PL is using it, then enter the name of the company you're shipping on the behalf of, right? So um, Walmart does not want to see the 3PL's uh, name there um, uh, unless, yeah, the 3PL is somehow a supplier in Walmart. A phone number, including the relevant extension, and then the user type, uh, whether that's GM, grocery, or e-com, um, and then whether you are a supplier or a carrier, right? So um, if you haven't kind of uh, learned it already, a lot of these um, a lot of these functions are done by 3PLs um, who uh, for companies that are shipping prepaid. So this may be something that is helpful to you as a supplier to learn more about just in terms of understanding the process that your 3PLs are kind of um, using uh, as they as they manage all of this stuff for you. Um, but yeah, for getting started, you know, if you guys are doing your own shipping um, and if you're monitoring your own shipping through the um, transportation portal, then it's something that your own company will be engaging with as well. Um, uh, I, I say hopefully, but, you know, there's exceptions to every rule, right? It might be better for some to not have any real engagement with that and to just let the 3PLs handle it entirely. Um, so ship point creation, this is, uh, this is the most kind of fundamental and important uh, or one of the most uh, important things that you can do in the transportation portal and really that the um, shipping and routing transportation guide helps with um, for getting started. Um, all collect suppliers must have a ship point number for each location. Um, and the essential ship point information is a contact name, email, phone number, and freight profile. So um, with that, with all of that, right, um, uh, that's just kind of the most basic stuff. One of the things that Walmart really kind of harps on a lot in the shipping and routing transportation guide is updating all this information, right? If someone moves on, uh, if you change the um, the contact name or the email, right? That stuff has to be updated pretty regularly, right? Because um, the thing that creates supply chain issues, the thing that kind of is creating all of these fines, all of these uh, AR chargebacks and uh, and all of the kinks in the supply chain that end up resulting in empty shelves and Walmart, um, it's all it all comes down to miscommunication, really, and not keeping information completely up to date. So um, that's from Walmart's perspective, that's what their demands are is this this information needs to be absolutely accurate 100% of the time, right? But miscommunication can happen in a million other different ways too, um, with regard to this information. So, uh, but yeah, that's just the that's just the most basic essential um, ship point information. Um, when it comes to creating a new ticket, so this is your uh, this is your dashboard in the uh, transportation portal. Um, uh, it's that one right there. Uh, New ticket is the way that you um, is the way that you get started with that. And um, I spent a little bit of time in the wiki there, which is uh, which is pretty helpful. Um, I think that there's a limiting kind of return uh, 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 on investment after a certain point. But yeah, if you guys are here, presumably you have a certain amount of time in your calendars for educating yourselves. Um, uh, browsing that wiki can be really helpful too. And searching through it, the search function might not be 100% great, um, but you never know. Search for a keyword with whatever it is that you're struggling with. You might be able to pull up a helpful article. Um, but yeah, that's that. We have tickets uh, and the um, the knowledge base there is a little different from the wiki. That's where they have their answers to common questions and helpful training tips. That's more of their um, FQA page. Um, than anything else. Um, but yeah, uh, for any of you, if you've explored the wiki a little bit more than I have, let us know how helpful it is or not. How helpful is the knowledge base? Um, is that something people should be investing a lot of time in um, or not? Okay, so more of this uh, required information for ship point creation. Uh, RA subject in the title subject line, right? If it is a new ship point, um, then you've got to let that uh, you've got to, that has to be communicated there, right? The ticket type, um, you would select uh, ship point request, new or update, right? So again, when you're updating um, ship points, right? Maybe you're getting rid of one 
or changing some essential information um, about it, um, you use that. Um, that goes in the ticket type. Uh, shipping commodity, this is the same thing that we saw before. Is this GM um, or grocery or perishable, right? There's a lot of stuff in the shipping and routing transportation guide about grocery, um, just because it's obviously something that requires a, a shorter lead time, right? Um, there has to be a lot more kind of um, any kinks in the supply chain for grocery could be a lot more um, damaging than in other ones, not from a business perspective from a business perspective, but in terms of actually being able to deliver um, uh, perishables on time. Um, and then the ship point request type. Again, if this is a new ship point, you just select new ship point. So there's about four different ways that you're communicating to Walmart that this is a new ship point, if that's what you're doing. And a part of that is, I'll go back here for just a second. A part of that is because uh, ship points need to be edited pretty regularly. So they have uh, R, the RA subject, the ticket type, um, the ship point request type. All of these are um, when you're creating a new ship point, it's all the same. Right. But whenever you're going back and you're editing um, certain kind of essential details for a specific ship point, you may change one of those and not the others. So um, that's that's why uh, there's all that redundancy there. There's a lot of different changes that you may need to make to ship points. Um, uh, throughout its lifespan, right? Um, so the required information um, for a specific ship point, um, obviously the number of pallets uh, to fill a 53 foot truck, right? So this is a kind of, um, this is an FTL, LTL sort of uh, detail, I guess we can say. Um, there's a 26 pallet minimum for a full truck load. Um, so, that's uh, um, for collect, FTL collect. This will be if you are not able to double stack pinwheel or load width wise, right? So um, loading width wise is obviously beneficial for, um, uh, or, or it can't be beneficial. It can be a lot faster from a loading perspective. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if you can double stack, you'll obviously have so many more. Um, 28 pallets will fit if you are able to pinwheel but can't double stack or load widthwise. Um, 30 pallets will fit uh, if you're able to load widthwise but can't double stack, right? All of these numbers can be doubled if the pallets can be double stacked. So those are kind of the main, uh, that's kind of the ideal um, uh, setup for the, the 53 foot truck um, for collect pickup. Um, and then uh, 14 in the shipping and routing guide has more specific instructions that gets, uh, it just gets more granular there. Um, and a lot of helpful graphics for visualizing what you're looking at um, or for visualizing that whole process. Um, and you can also find the um, packaging information by following that whole kind of route in, in the, um, sorry, uh, packaging information in the Retail Link Academy by following that. Um, uh, um, excuse me, path, pathway. Um, that'll give you more help with the trailer dimensions too. Okay, so um, the shipping hours are obviously essential information for the ship points too. Um, these go in the description box. Again, it's not a very intuitive user experience. Um, not everyone would necessarily know that the description box is for communicating the shipping hours to Walmart. But again, this is the process that they have put in place. Um, and uh, Walmart requires a minimum of eight shipping hours um, Monday through Friday uh, for loading. So that's uh, that's the minimum. Um, but there's a lot of other possibilities there too, right? Um, and then you can submit the ticket. So that's kind of the bare minimum for creating a ticket, um, for creating a new ship point. Um, and from there, uh, if the ship point request is approved, a ship point number will be issued. A new ship point can be uh, can begin shipping POs 45 days after a new ship point number has been assigned. So you've got those three kind of um, uh, thresholds in that process. First, you have the approval, right? And after the approval, um, a ship point number will be issued. And I, I, if I remember correctly, I think the average for that is about 48 days after approval. Um, and then once you get the number, you can start shipping 45 days after um after that number has been assigned, right? So after you've received that number, um, that's kind of the timeline for that. 
All right. So we'll do a little bit on uh, tracking shipments. Um, and and I mean just a little bit because <laughs> this is kind of you can really uh, you can really get granular with this process too. And uh, and I want to emphasize also with the the last kind of portion. Um, ship point creation and ship point editing are two very different things. So we're really just covering the basics with that, with creating a new ship point, the absolutely essential information um, that Walmart requires for that and where to put that essential information. Um, in terms of ship point editing and, and kind of staying on top of that whole process, um, as, as unhelpful as this is uh, to, to say, uh, it is something that needs to be happening regularly all the time that auditing kind of process needs to be happening it needs to be built into your kind of personnel process right um if someone's um if if there's a a change in kind of 3pls or if there's a change in personnel at the 3pl or at your own company these are problems that can come back um to haunt you so same thing with tracking shipments um we're covering the basics here um, the basic information Walmart communicates in the uh, shipping and routing transportation guide that isn't necessarily intuitive in the apps themselves. Um, so here is another lengthy kind of pathway uh, for finding the TSPC 2.0. That's the app that you're going to be using for tracking shipments. Um, it, it's not, it's not um, necessarily intuitive in the name of the app itself um, either. So um POs can be confirmed uh, or submitted under the routing tools drop down on the left menu, right? So that's one of the most important um, features of this app that you can uh, that you can do through the TSPC 2.0. Um, and then uh, Walmart's recommendation for checking the routing status is twice a day for updates, um, which is a lot. Uh, but um, yes, that is their recommendation. Other uh, main functions in the um, TSPC 2.0 app, you can confirm and track shipments, which is what we're going to be talking about, and uh, those routing statuses that Walmart recommends checking twice a day. So those are those are the big ones. Okay, so um, if you don't already have access to the TSPC 2.0, um, the way that you have to go about that whole process, um, suppliers need to know and have their retail link user ID, the seven digit alphanumeric um, ID uh, that you can find in retail link. So um, this is in the my profile icon um, in the top right corner of the retail link homepage. That's where you can find um, your information. You can select my user account and it's listed under the personal information tab um, uh, on the retail link apps page the retail link site administrator has to click on the additional access request app. So that's the key. Um, uh, that's the linchpin there. Additional access request um, is its own app within retail link and the administrator has to be the one to do it. Right. So there's a lot that's going on um, just with that process. Um, in the provide exact user ID search bar, that's where you entered the seven digit alphanumeric um, ID number. Um, that you found under your personal information. Um, uh, you have to also enter the retail link user ID and then um, click the search icon. So uh, in order to find that profile. On the right side of the screen, enter the exact access group ID codes for external supplier access. Um, so again, this is not intuitive information. This is information that they have in the... Um, uh, transportation guide. Um, so uh, for the TS uh, CP 2.0, um, for that line, you put 64301. And don't worry about taking a screenshot of this or making sure that you can write it down in time. Unless you need this information today, um, you'll be getting it in the next three days. So you can kind of keep this all um, on file or uh, screenshot it and save it to your desktop with a, a specific name. Um, so these are the, just the um, access group ID codes. Um, the uh, US TSCP 2.0 um, supplier external line, you've got that code there. Um, confirm shipment suppliers line is a different code. Con confirm shipment upload external 
line and then the LTL routing external line. So those are those are the codes that Walmart provides. I'm not sure if that's a totally exhaustive list of the different kind of uh, sort of like permissions um, for uh, a user of TS uh, PC 2.0. Um, and that will change kind of depending on if, um, yeah, if it's the supplier or if it's external, right? If it's a through PL. Um, each line will auto populate with the group name, allowed users and country, right? So um, if there's a problem with that, um, maybe there's a problem with the code um, and Walmart hasn't updated the, um, the, uh, the guide yet. Um, but I haven't heard anything about that. So let us know if you've seen anything um, uh, along those lines or if you've seen any more codes um, than these. Is this a, an exhaustive list that Walmart provides in their guide or are there other, um, other codes out there too? Um, but yeah, that's that. So we're going to do a very kind of high level uh, look at load types at Walmart. A lot of this applies to a bunch of other places as well, kind of more more fundamental logistics stuff, shipping, um, uh, shipping basics. Um, and right now we're working on a little bit more stuff for general logistics um, information and best practices for suppliers um, as a way of, as a way of making sure that we're not getting too lost in the weeds with specific uh, retailer specific compliance programs and stuff like that. So um a lot of this should be really um, uh, should be uh, should be a ton of review. Uh, hopefully, um, unless you're just not in the logistics side of things at all, um, uh, in which case this could be helpful for getting a little bit of a sense of, or, or maybe just getting a little perspective on that, getting a little sense of what your three PLs are doing or what your logistics team is kind of up to. Um, so, full truckload you'll see referred to as FTL or TL. Um, I like FTL just because it helps to kind of um, uh, bring contrast to LTL. Um, that's really what it comes down to. Um, rail is the, is a truckload shipment moving as intermodal or rail, right? So it's the same size. Um, CP is consolidation loads, uh, or load desk type CP. Um, so those are kind of their own thing and they, they require a lot of different logistical, um, analysis, um, I guess we can we can leave it at that. <laughs> uh, fleet is TL assigned to Walmart. Private fleet is the carrier, so that's collect. Um, Walmart's fleet is, I think, the biggest in the world. Uh, um, correct me if I'm wrong on that. They they move a lot of they move a lot of stuff. Collect. Um, we have a lot of information on collect versus prepaid. Um, what's kind of best, what's ideal. Um, if you have a choice, which would be best for your business? A lot of people don't. It's kind of just a contractual thing that happens early on whenever the CPG is just desperate to get into Walmart, right? So um, I, I highly recommend reading up on some of that other stuff. Maybe Ali could put it in the chat. Um, something, uh, we have a few webinars, I think, and articles on collect versus prepaid. Um, but yeah, Walmart has a huge fleet. That doesn't necessarily mean that they want everyone to ship collect, right? Um, they have a huge fleet that is maybe overworked and understaffed. So maybe they're trying to encourage more people to go prepaid, um, go through a 3PL or something like that. Um, but that's not necessarily insider information. <laughs> uh, caveat. <laughs> just Peter's opinion. Um, LTL, uh, less than truckload, right? That's the big distinction uh, for FTL, LTL. Where does that threshold actually lie? Is it a matter of pallets? Is it a matter of weight? Um, depends on what you're shipping. Yeah, again, we can get lost in the weeds. And then uh, SPMKG is just the small packages. And this is, um, uh, there, there's another kind of whole conversation to be had about the threshold between LTL and small packaging. Um, but there's a, um, there's a lot that you can, uh, read up on small packaging. Um, and if you want to do some kind of like, um, uh, LTL or consolidation thing with that, um, 
uh, anyways, but pages 69 through 72 of the shipping and routing guide cover some of that. There's a lot of information on how to do small packaging in a way that is compliant with Walmart receiving in the supply chains, um, uh, Walmart supply chain packaging standards document. Um, so definitely read up on that if that's something you guys are going to be doing a lot of in Walmart or are doing a lot of. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can be hit with fines um, in that process. Uh, but yeah, all of this stuff is what makes up the world of logistics and what makes the job of logistics people so difficult. Um, Supply Pike actually got its start doing um, a kind of a kind of logistical analysis of shipments for consolidation or something like consolidation. How can we make your um, truckloads as efficient as possible? Um, so that's kind of the parent company that we came out of. So a lot of our employees who've been here for a long time came out of this world and are very familiar with um, uh, all of that. But um, hopefully y'all aren't, you know, um, constantly in the logistics weeds. And hopefully that can be more of just a way of of gaining a little bit of perspective on some of the things that can go wrong and some of the things that can generate a lot of revenue loss or a lot of um, uh, supply chain issues that are relevant on a higher level for any CPG uh, or supplier. Okay, so uh, kind of uh, uh, segueing out of that into the shipping success metrics, this is a nice way of saying the ways that Walmart is going to bleed you out for, <laughs> for not being completely compliant with everything that they want. Um, so, uh, but yes, uh, we'll, uh, we can get into um, some of these. So there's really three big ones. We talk a ton about SQUEP and OTIV. Um, we're again, we're, our, our company is in the rev loss space. So we cover a lot of, um, we cover a lot of compliance issues and SQUEP and OTFR compliance programs. Um, freight factor is a little bit different. Um, that's the amount charged by Walmart to transport the inbound freight. Um, so just for collect suppliers, SQUEP and OTIF applies to everyone. Um, so, uh, how is freight factor calculated? Uh, again, you may see that as FF. Um, we'll, we'll abbreviate anything and everything that we can. Uh, distance, utilization, and mode. Those are the three factors that are um, that are taken into uh, consideration um, with that charge. Um, how far are we shipping the merchandise? Right. How full is the trailer? How large a shipment is it? Right. So they're kind of going to they're going to be putting that um, responsibility on the suppliers to make sure that those shipments are as efficient as possible. Um, and then the mode, the method of transportation, is it TL, LTL, rail, et cetera, right? And that um, affects the cost a lot too. A little bit of a note I wanted to make here. Um, freight factor is not the same thing as the collect pickup program, uh, even though they're very similar. Collect pickup program, you can think of as the icing on the cake over freight factor. Um, freight factor is... Um, Yes, just the charge for um, for collect collect pickup program is another charge that um, started in the middle of last year, 2022. Um, and it's uh, it's based on the department, um, uh, those fees. Um, but yeah, that's just another fee that's kind of added on to it. It's not something that can be disputed. Um, we have a lot. Uh, we covered a lot on the collect pickup program in the past. I think we're going to do another webinar recapping it um, here in the next couple months. So stay tuned for that. Um, but SQUEP and OTIF are different um, from freight factor and collect the collect pickup program. Freight factor and and the CPP are um, uh, there's no real negotiating that. That's kind of rules that Walmart has set for their collect suppliers, and it's going to have to be paid out. Um, and it can't really be disputed. SQUEP and OTIF, uh, as difficult as they are, are more negotiable, right? And, and they are compliance programs in the sense of it's Walmart's way of trying to um, keep all of their suppliers, collect and prepaid, as compliant with their shipping standards as possible. But what that means is that some of those, some of those chargebacks are not necessarily um, valid. So it's also on the uh, it's also the supplier's responsibility to be paying attention to those, um, checking up on that, and holding Walmart accountable. So um, you see down there at the bottom of both of those sections, they are disputable in high radius. Um, we have uh, APDP over here. That's where the AP deductions are disputed, and then high radius over here. That's where the AR chargebacks um, uh, are disputed. 
um, uh, which is a, it's an outside, it's a third party that Walmart uses for that. So um, that's a, that's a, a pretty core difference. Um, one thing just to kind of note, and again, this is, this is more of a kind of a Peter's opinion than a necessarily like an insider insight from Walmart. But what we see a lot of is that AP deductions, um, there are a lot more of them and they are generally more disputable than SQUEP and OTIF fines. SQUEP and OTIF are much better to avoid in the first place than to um, than to have uh, having a disputing mindset with SQUEP and OTIF that you have for AP deductions is not necessarily the right idea. AP deductions for like shortages and damages and stuff like that, um, it's great to avoid those too, but um, those are disputable and we have seen Walmart pay those back pretty regularly. Um, SQUEP and OTIF, we're just seeing a lot of people struggling to win those um, um, those fines back. Maybe that'll change in years to come. But our recommendation is uh, we we have we have a uh, uh, our like supply pipe catchphrase is get paid and get better. And um, basically, um, for any deductions that you or any deductions or uh, AP or AR um, that you can get get paid back on, get paid back on. Right, you pay attention to those. Um, but avoiding the fines in the first place, especially when it comes to SQUEP and OTIF, when it comes to compliance, that's the gold. That's the real kind of um, icing on the cake. Um, but for those of you who don't know, we'll cover these at kind of a high level. Um, um, we also have just kind of heaps and heaps of content on SQUEP and OTIF. So go to Supplier Wiki and just search around in there and you can read some of our stuff. We've got ebooks and and other webinars. So um, if you're not as familiar with this, you, you definitely should be. But... Um, I'll cover this kind of briefly. Um, the Supplier Quality Excellence Program is more recent than OTIF. OTIF, I think, came out in like 2018, I want to say. It was when they first started that. And then SQUEP started in 2021, I think, is when it was when it was released. Um, and it's not completely released yet. We're still waiting on phase four. Um, but yes, this is packaging compliance. That's what SQUEP is kind of all about. Um, phase one was PO accuracy. So we got a question submitted early about ASNs. Um, that falls under phase one of SQUEP, um, which I can answer here in, in just a second. Um, phase two is barcode and labeling compliance. Um, phase three is packaging pallet and load compliance. All these first three phases are active and you, people are receiving fines for them as we speak. Right. So you go to the SQUEP dashboard and you can pay attention to those. Um, don't be deceived by the number of, of fines that you receive, but rather try to calculate the total amount of dollars lost. Because sometimes those ASN not downloaded, you know, you'll, you'll get hit with like a hundred of those sub defects. Um, but the actual cash value of them isn't as much as say um, money that's being lost to overages um, or something else. So uh, those first three phases are active. We're going to see phases two and three picking up a lot more heat as uh, Walmart DCs become more um, automated in their receiving processes. Um, so maybe just keep an eye on those. Uh, th they may spike, um, unfortunately. And then phase four, nothing. We've heard absolutely nothing uh, for like a year now. Um, so we have no idea when phase four is coming. Scheduling and transportation. Um, it sounds like it's very close to the heart of this whole conversation today. Um, but yeah, we haven't heard anything about when it's coming. If you have, please let us know. Um, uh, yeah, so that's that. OTIF, uh, this is um, the goal that Walmart set for all suppliers to be 98% on time, 98% in full um, in 2018. Um, it affects all brick and mortar and e-commerce suppliers, um, but it does not affect um, necessarily yet. Sam's Club, uh, DSD, DI, um, Walmart International and marketplace sellers. I say yet because Sam's Club does have OTIF fines or it, it, it has visibility into OTIF performance, um, but it hasn't started uh, actually charging those fines yet. So that's something that I'd imagine um, Sam's Club suppliers can expect um, pretty soon. Um, we had a question submitted early about ASNs. Um, we submit them on every PO, but we keep receiving compliance violations stating not received or late. Um, my assumption is that this is the ASN not downloaded defect. It might be uh, something kind of related to that or tangential to that too, but we see a lot of ASN not downloaded defects. Um, 
uh, does the routing and transportation guide detail exactly how to process ASNs? So the ASN not downloaded defect, I would describe as a misnomer a little bit. What we see is most of the time, any kind of ASN related compliance fine has more to do with timing than anything else. So timing the sending of the ASN as close to the actual um, uh, shipment's departure um, from the supplier to Walmart, that's our recommendation. Um, we've seen kind of the most success with that. Um, so um, that would be my recommendation for that. Ali, did we have a follow-up question with that? Um, I think it's it's adjacent, yes. So um, Roseanne asked, how will we get billed on SQUEP and OTIF fines? Or they've also been called chargebacks. Yeah, so that's uh, that's a separate um, process from the AP deductions. AP deductions are withheld. Uh, AR chargebacks are actually um, invoiced to suppliers, and then those come at the end of the month. Um, I believe that's correct for both OTIF and SQUEP. Um, but they can be tracked in their respective dashboards. Um, so those are in the Retail Link app. And then um, validity can be done on them in a variety of different ways. Right. You've got to you've got to be collecting a bunch of different information to kind of determine if uh, the fines are valid or not. Um, but then if you have found that they are invalid, then they can be disputed in high radius. I don't know if that's um, if that's exactly kind of all of what you were looking for there. Um, Ali, maybe you have something to add on to that. No, you you covered all the bases, I would say. If you do see something in um, the information system in retail link called APIS. Um, I believe it stands for AP inquiry system. And you see something that's labeled code 99, that's probably going to be an OTIV fine most likely. And um, you should be able to identify those also in high radius like Peter said. I'll also send just a couple of our um, articles and eBooks that cover some of these in depth, but it is tricky and they are separate. Um, and Peter, I may be, you know, spoiling the next slide. I'm not exactly sure, but these can stack as well. So you can see um, a OTIF charge on the same PO that has an AP charge and same with SQUEP. So just making sure you're also saving that proof documentation if you do dispute. So looks like I didn't spoil anything on those next slides. Oh, yeah. but I did want to add that there. Yes, and it is super confusing because for uh, OTIF, the code 99 is technically an AP deduction code, right? But it's used to describe all of the OTIF program, which is its own completely separate thing. So as Ali is saying, is those fines can all stack on top of each other for a single issue. Um, one thing we like to talk about a lot is how um, shortages and overages can sometimes be connected. Uh, a lot of the time, it's a miscommunication about where these shipments are going. Um, and so you can get hit on kind of both sides of that. Um, overages, you can you can just hemorrhage revenue um, in that process because um, Walmart may not be paying you for extra stuff that you're sending them, right? And then also hitting you with the fine on top of that um, and then hitting you with the shortage deduction uh, from a different kind of location as well. Um, but we should probably move on. Um, uh, I'm sure... Uh, Please get your questions in um, by the end of it. We want to spend some time on the best practices um, and then and then have a lot of time for answering questions at the end. Uh, we have one more question that was submitted early that um, we can touch on a little bit at the end. Um, but uh, yeah, here we go. Um, so uh, we've been talking a lot about these SQUEP defects. Um, you can check the SQUEP portal on Retail Link. Um, but a defect is just any non-compliance uh, um, instance um, against the secondary packaging supply chain standard. So there's a hyperlink for that into retail link, right? Um, we have our own kind of deep dive that we do on that document. Um, it necessarily has to be a lot more shallow just because it's a huge document. Um, but yeah, it's, it's essential for supplier success. And there's a lot in there that will help with, um, avoiding squat defects, squat finds, um, uh, and they are incremental to OTIF fines and AP deductions. Okay, so um, how uh, how does scoring and the and the fining system work? 
uh, for OTIF. Um, well, if it's a uh, prepaid on time in cases arrive early, late, or without an appointment, um, uh, you'll get hit with a fine. This is defined by the MABD, the, uh, the must arrive by date. Um, and, and there's a window there. So we have seen like, you know, a shipment arriving a little bit early is certainly better than a shipment arriving a little bit late, but, uh, we can't recommend doing anything other than the MABD. Right. So, um, I would just say what I've seen in terms of actual fines that are issued, some fines are not issued for arriving a day early. Um, so that MABD is Walmart's official policy. Um, but we don't see fines always for um, things that aren't exactly um, hitting that MABD. Um, for collect ready, you know, the shipment is is, uh, is not confirmed by this time um, after the PO is sent, right? So um, the shipment has to be um, ready. The order is not ready for pickup by the appointment time, right? Uh, pretty self-explanatory there. In full is also very self-explanatory. Fewer cases arrived than what was ordered um, or no cases arrived at all. Um, so that uh, shortages and in full uh, OTIF fines, there's a lot of overlap there, um, unfortunately. So, uh, but yeah, we've got tons of stuff on OTIF and SQUEP. So please, um, it, you know, you can Google OTIF and SQUEP and we should be ranking pretty high um, for those, you've got some really quality content out on that. So please um, go read more about that um, if you have questions on that front. Um, so the shipping and routing transportation guide has a lot of uh, different recommendations for best practices. So these are just some of the ones that I kind of hand picked out, um, but definitely go um, and and explore the, the document itself, which has a little bit more detail. Um, so there's a few routing best practices that we'll be covering here pretty quickly. Um, before confirming this, a lot of this sounds kind of condescending, right? It's like it's Walmart kind of saying some obvious things, but really these situations are more complicated and difficult um, sometimes than the way that they communicate it is actually implying. Uh, but yeah, do the PO quantities, case, weight, cube, pallets, accurately represent the precise amount of trailer space uh, needed for each PO. Basically, this is just saying, is your logistics right? Is your logistics perfect? Um, so uh, if not, you can follow the steps on, on pages 31 through 42 of the shipping and routing guide to edit quantities and confirm shipment. Um, and and again, this is one of the reasons why the document itself, this, this presentation is not a replacement for the document itself. Um, uh, contact your RM uh, or merchant for assistance updating online item settings. Um, to ensure future accuracy. Uh, that can be um, helpful too. Again, you know, when it comes to communicating with RMs or merchants, um, yeah, it's a kind of a, it's a kind of a, well, we could do a whole best practices on that in and of itself. How do you, um, how do you have those conversations um, in a way that can be helpful for your business? Um, so before, uh, again, more on, um, before you confirm POs is the PO routed for the correct aligned ship point, right? This is how you can have overages and shortages that are connected to each other. If the ship point isn't, um, totally accurate, um, specific location slash address where the freight will be picked up by the carrier. Um, and then, um, one of six of the shipping and routing guide, um, has a lot on alignment that could be helpful and relevant for that. Also, you know, you can go back to 31 through 42 of the same document um, for editing um, ship point uh, and confirm shipment. And then um, contacting the, F, uh, the FTLO team uh, uh, to correct the transom ship point alignment to ensure future accuracy is just kind of what Walmart recommends there. Um, but let us know if that's something that any one of you have had success with. Um, is the FTLO team um, reactive, right? How is the timing with that whole process? Um, let us know if that's something that's been working for you or not. And then also, finally, um, do you have all product for the POs available to ship on time? And this is a very big question. Um, and it's not always a, a simple matter of, uh, of uh, just choosing not to have everything available on time, right? Um, but yeah. That's the that's the info. Uh, that's the the big if in OTIF. <laughs>
Um, if not, uh, do not confirm the POs, right? When product is available, contact replenishment, or uh, you can do it in Nova to extend the MABD or DNSB. And you can't always do that without being punished, um, but uh, it may be better than the in full fine. Um, then confirm the POs uh, with updated dates. Uh, we have a lot of stuff on Nova too. So if, if you have more questions about how to do all that, um, let us know. Uh, or Ali can maybe send something along too. Um, so more in the routing best practices, if the product is available to ship, um, POs may be confirmed 60 days before the MABD on the PO. Um, POs must be confirmed and confirmed shipment as soon as possible after receiving the POs. Um, Walmart requires that POs be confirmed by 4 p.m. Central Time the following calendar day after receiving them. Um, international POs cannot be confirmed until the PO has physically arrived at a U.S. port. So all that is best practice. Um, if the product is available to ship, again, um, manual POs may be confirmed 30 days prior to the MABD. Um, if the PO is received less than 30 days prior to the MABD, the expectation is to confirm the PO by 4 p.m. Uh, uh, central the next calendar day. Again, do not confirm your POs if product is not available to ship by the DNSB. Again, you, you have that kind of constant message. Um, and all of that editing can happen in Nova again. So uh, for scheduling best practices, um, the Walmart calls these shippers of choice. Um, they abide by the following, um, these 10 commandments. Uh, uh, build relationships with our carrier base through proactive and open communication. That I highly second. Um, as I mentioned before, every issue in this whole process, all of supply chain management really just boils down to clear communication. Uh, easier said than done, of course, but um, that's where fines come from. That's where uh, um, out of stocks come from. Um, the whole process is just about not being able to have the right information when it's needed. Uh, minimize driver dwell time at origin, obviously, right? The more efficient your kind of um, uh, ship points are, the better. Um, Walmart expectation is to load and depart within two hours for collect suppliers. Um, freight availability. <laughs> um, yeah, have it. <laughs> and then expedite the check-in process as much as you can. Same. Uh, Walmart identifies shippers of choice as abiding by more of the following. Allow for uh, work-ins as needed while also prioritizing drivers who arrive um, in a timely fashion. Um, uh, they're asking that you provide eight hours of shipping per day. So we, we talked about that already with ship point creation. What are those eight hours? At least Monday through Friday. Um, provide facilities that accommodate drivers and loading flexibility. Pretty vague. Um, but um, a lot of your logistics teams will have more of a sense of what that means. Um, the best way to build flexibility into your schedule is planning open appointment slots into each day. Um, this provides the greatest opportunity to accommodate work-ins and or reschedules as needed without impacting the scheduled appointments, right? Um, what Walmart wants is for y'all to be flexible, um, uh, which is, yeah, easier said than done. So when it comes to loading, uh, basically, there's um, there's stuff in the shipping and routing guide in the SPS CS 23 that um, just gets um, gets to the level of detail that's necessary for all of this, um, for that whole process. Um, 122 in the shipping and routing guide. Um, but yeah, whole swaths of the SPS CS 23, um, 230 to 235, 245 to 248 are just two of the, the um, passages that we've kind of taken out. Um, to talk about pallet, ship fleet, uh, floor loading guidelines um, in more detail. Um, but more of those best practices and regulations can be found in um, on also on 120 to 131 of that guide, a little bit more of a high level compared to the um, pallet slip sheet and floor loading guidelines that are earlier on. <clears throat> okay. So those are our best practices. Uh, I flew through those pretty quickly. So um, go back and, and look at those if that's helpful for you and your business or your logistics team um, later on. Um, hopefully this is good for giving you just a little bit of a sense of what those teams are doing. Um, if, if you're not directly kind of involved with that whole process um, right away. Um, but yeah, uh, do we have any questions, Allie? 
Yeah, Peter. Uh, Debbie asks, will TSCP and Nova both be available when Luminate kicks in? Uh, that is the question. Um, Nova, uh, I don't think Nova will be replaced by Luminate. Um, uh, but the fear that we have is that Supplier One is a new platform, that that will eventually be replacing Nova. That's just the fear that we have. We haven't uh, we've explicitly heard confirmation from Walmart that they are not guaranteeing that that will happen. So that's the kind of political explanation. Um, if you ask me personally, I would say that we may see Nova and item 360 be replaced by supplier one in the next calendar year, but that's just completely a guess. Um, so I would recommend just kind of seeing if you have access to supplier one, get in there, poke around a little bit and, um, uh, I think uh, some suppliers have early access right now, but I think it will go live to all suppliers in early 2024. At that point, yeah, I'd recommend just kind of try to discipline yourself and 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 poke around in there a little bit more, maybe get a sense for what are the Nova things happening in supplier one that um, aren't happening in Nova or vice versa. Um, but yeah, Luminate, um, as far as we know, really is just going to replace DSS. Um, so uh, if you weren't, if you didn't know that already, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but, um, or at least of, of change, you know, change is hard. Um, so, but yeah, DSS will go away. We've got some, I, I'm writing an article about Luminate and DSS right now. So, um, we'll be able to get that out to y'all, um, pretty soon. Um, but yeah, Nova should be safe for now, but if it does get replaced by something, I think it'll be supplier one. And I think that'll be, you know, sometime in the next year or so, but Walmart has not committed to that. And just to clarify, Peter, thank you for answering that question. Luminate and Supplier One are going to be separate. So, you know, there's lots of great content on Luminate out currently on what's happening. Um, and I believe the the date for DSS to be sunset is March of 2024. Yeah. Supplier One will live inside Retail Link and really how I understand it, and this is newer information, is that supplier one is going to have like pieces like Nova inside of it. So it's kind of aggregated. All the information is in one area. We haven't heard exactly when that is planning to happen, but we'll keep you guys updated. Um, but to answer your question directly, Debbie, Nova should not be integrated into Luminate as of what Walmart has said currently. Yep. Perfect. Well, that's all the questions that we had. Thank you guys for all being on today. Let's go ahead and jump to the next slide, Peter. I know I posted this earlier, um, but here are some of our resources. I think I shared a couple of these. If you want kind of the follow along guide here in the center, the Walmart shipping and routing transportation guide, I posted that, but I will send it once more. Um, that is a little bit we covered a little bit of that information here today, so you can actually go in and, and see that again. Um, but we have a bunch of free content on Supplier Wiki, so go check that out. And then I'll share our emails here. If you guys have additional questions, these are our real emails. Please feel free to contact us if you had feedback about the webinar, if you know you want content on something else that Walmart is doing, or if you just have a question from today's webinar or on anything supplier related, we'd love to help you out. So you can email us or you can find us at supplyfight.com and we'll get you where you need to be. So thank you everyone for joining and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Mm -hmm.